Welcome to another lace video. Uh, today's video is not going to be a tutorial of how to do the process, although I will include a little bit of, of that in it, um, but it's mainly just to document the process that I've been going through for the project that I'm working on at the moment. Um, the project that I'm doing is a gift for my parents and three weeks from today will be their 50th wedding anniversary. Although by the time you see this, that will have already been and gone because I'm not going to share the video until after I've given them the gift. Just in case on the off chance they see it and spoil the surprise. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to do some lace and then get it nicely framed. And originally my thought was to do um, some interlocking hearts. Um, similar to what I did on the front of this, this book. Um, hopefully that's in focus, I can't tell from, from where I am. But yeah, this, this was a, a little design that I made myself. And I wanted to do something kind of similar to that, but on a bigger scale and more detailed. And I was looking online at um, lace patterns and I found some nice ones on, on Pinterest. But I couldn't quite find one which was exactly what I wanted. And I kind of came to the realisation that actually, thinking about it for my parents, like they're not kind of hearts and flowers kinds of people. So although to me, like the image of the two hearts is like very romantic and, but it didn't quite seem the right fit for them. So I was thinking, so what, what else could I do? And I was looking through some old patterns that I'd photocopied and I came across this one with a swan and I've tried doing this pattern numerous times but I've never been able to do it because I just didn't understand the instructions from the beginning with the beak the instructions were really complicated so each time I, I've said in previous videos that my journey with lace has been a bit stop and start and every time I come back to it I look at this swan pattern and I'm like, surely I can understand this now. Like I've learned a bit more and I read the instructions again and I'm still like, what? Let me, let me give you an, an example, okay. So, um, hang two pairs on pin A, okay, that's fine. And make the first half of a leaf refer to page 51. I don't have page 51, so that's, I'm, I'm at a disadvantage to start. And then um, a bit further on, saying put up pin one and place two pairs from the beak as follows. To the left of pin one, put the left hand pair from B and the left hand pair from A and the right hand pair from B. Hang two pairs around pin one. And then I'm like, what, what, what does that even mean? And I'm just like, I can't even start. Like I don't even know what pairs to hang on which pins like and if you can't even get that to start how on earth are you going to get to the rest of it and it was frustrating because i can see that this part is just cloth stitch and then this part is just half stitch so the the main bulk of it is is really simple but i just couldn't get started so what i ended up doing was i i looked at this uh, the pattern and then I copied it, but I simplified it, and I did my own version of, of the beak, of the starting point. So I'll show you that um, from a looking down perspective in, in a minute, so you can I can kind of zoom in and show you properly what I'm talking about. I should probably just mention that this is the, the instructions and the, and the diagram is a, is a photocopy from, from an old book and I'm not advocating that you photocopy from books which are copyrighted but when I when I did this I was actually working for a print company and we had a, a license that allowed us to copy a certain percentage from copyrighted books so that the company paid out however many thousands of pounds every year so that we we were able to do this and um, one of my jobs was I would go around the office building and do test prints on all the copiers to make sure they were working correctly. And I had this kind of test sheet which had like, you know, grey and black squares. 
to test the print quality and I would I would copy this sheet and then throw it away and then I would go to the next copier and I would copy the sheet and throw it away oh if you can hear that with my my cat just exiting the cat flap if you can hear that clicking in the background um yeah so so I was doing all these prints every day on these copiers and then just throwing them away so I thought well why don't I copy something that is actually going to be useful rather than just chucking it in the bin every day so that's that's how I've, I've ended up with with photocopies of of some patterns from books um, and that's also the reason why I didn't have the extra information that it refers to when when there's a bit where it says I'll refer to page 51 well I because I wasn't reading it as I was copying it I was just using the book for test prints then I didn't know that I also needed to copy a bit later in the book to make it useful to me <laughs> but yeah um, so that's that's a long-winded explanation of why I've got photocopies from books and um, let me show you close up the pattern and my own simplified version of it so this is what the swan should look like from the original pattern in the book and you see that the beak is quite detailed so you've got like the top and bottom part of the beak and then where extra pairs of bobbins are added in they use that to create the the bump at the top of the the beak and then it's got like this the eye um so i didn't understand the instructions for starting the beak or where to add the extra pairs or how to do the eye <laughs> but it's like once i'd got to this point i would have been fine so i thought right let's have a look at the at the pattern and this is where all the complication is you've got a b one two three four and then there's multiple little lines marked for for the the design for the eye there's other letters here on the tail and it's it's just it was just too complicated so i did my own simpler version of it and um, this one's actually obviously a, a mirror image of it because i decided i would do two two swans but can you see you see the difference between this start point and i've just i've just done it just as a straightforward you know one piece beak just zigzagging backwards and forwards and then i've just got one line marked for where i was going to do the eye and i'll talk about how i did the the eye later on um but yeah i started off with six pairs at the beak and then when i got to this point i added an extra four pairs and i just did it each row that i did it's kind of like i added one added one added one added one um, so it's kind of a smooth transition to add the extra pairs so I didn't have this this bit with the with the bump but but I'm okay with that I mean it's still recognizable as a swan even without that so um, let me show you next the practice piece that I did so here we go this, I did a practice one in in white because it was a thread that I've used before and I was confident that, that I could work well with the thread. Um, the neck has kind of straightened up a little bit, just I think just because of how tight the, the rows are. Um, so when this gets stitched onto a piece of fabric, you can just gently just kind of coax it back where you want it to be when you then stitch it down to the fabric and I'll just I would just use the little loops where it goes around the the pin as you're making it that would just be the little points where I use that to to sew to the fabric and then obviously at the tail end it's got all the all the loose threads um, and I've left those quite long so they can just be um, pushed through the fabric and then tidied up on the back so you wouldn't see those in the finished piece so like I said I just just did straightforward cloth stitch for the body I didn't quite understand the instructions on this tail part um, but then later on when I did the, the next one 
um, I kind of figured out what that was talking about, how to how to link that together. So I was still learning, learning as I go. And then you come back round and kind of link. So so this is is linked together. Although you follow this pattern, it's kind of you link the stitches at various points along here, and then where the wing crosses over the back of the body. Oh, now my cat's just coming back in. He makes quite a song and dance about coming in the cat flap. So you'll probably hear quite a lot of clicking in the background as he's coming back in. Um, yeah, so where the wing crosses back over, um, I just attached it at these sort of four points as well, where it joins. And then I used the, I did a, a reverse pattern, um, which is the one that you saw earlier and I did it with the gold thread. So this is this is the thread that I used. Um, it's a Madeira, Madeira Metallic 15 and the color gold 27. I, I believe that's that's label was on there um, when it when it arrived to me. So it was the seller that had written that on there. Um, it's actually metallic sewing thread. And I don't know if you can see it's kind of in in separate little strands so so as you're using it it's just one but where it's cut it starts to kind of fray apart so it's it's a delicate thread to work with oh i hope that was still in frame i just realized i've been all over the place yeah so the the threads kind of fray quite easily when it's cut um but yeah that's the gold thread that i bought and here's my gold swan so you see the difference here on the tail portion that this one is kind of open whereas this is kind of connected together um, I'll show that later on at the moment at the time of filming I'm I'm already in the middle of doing my second swan so I'll just kind of film at various points showing you the the different pieces. Um, unfortunately, I'd already got past the, the the beak and the eye before I even thought about filming. So I'll kind of talk through that a bit later, but I'll show a few other steps as I go. And then my plan is that when I sew it onto the fabric, the two swans, so it'll be two gold swans, and then when I sew it down, the idea of manipulating the the heads down a little bit when it's sewn, so it kind of forms a heart shape in the middle. So it's not quite so um, <laughs> lovey-dovey hearts as actual heart designs. But I just thought the swans are, you know, a really nice representation of sort of long-lasting relationships. And then with the heart shape as well, I just thought, you know, it seemed like a it seemed like a nice idea. So the the main part of the body is done with the simple cloth stitch. So from the the beak, um, I had six pairs in the in the beak, and then I added in extra pairs here. So then I've got ten pairs in total. So I've just been working the cloth stitch around the neck. And then that will follow around the round the body and then when I get back to to this point for the wing then I would change to the half stitch just to give it a different texture on the the wing so I'll I'll do a row um, with it zoomed out like this so you can see whoops so you can see what the bobbins are doing and then I'll zoom in um, so you can see it perhaps a little bit closer as well okay so we're just as I did before we're just working with two pairs at a time so with the first four bobbins we just do a cross twist cross and then because it's the first one around this pin we just tighten those threads around the pin so that we get a neat loop around the pin and let's cross twist cross cross twist cross cross twist cross cross, twist, cross
and then at the end of the row we do two twists so that the threads that go around the pin so that the threads are, are twisted together and they don't separate it just gives a neater look um, after all the pins have been taken out so then we just find where that next pin goes just pull the threads up tight and just adjust the tension on these wouldn't normally need to pull each bobbin individually to get the tension but this gold thread is is a different texture to the normal thread that I would use and it's it's a bit harder to work with well I find it harder to work with anyway um, okay so let me zoom in okay and then I'll do a row coming back the other way just lengthen the threads a little bit so I'm still doing cross, twist, cross and then tighten the threads around that pin and then cross, twist, cross and then when we do the last one and then two extra twists on the end and then put a pin up in the next hole and again we just tighten up the tension on the threads and then I'll just carry on like that so here we are at the end of the tail and what I've done is as I was working along at this point I left one pair out and the same at this point and this point so I've got three pairs that have not been worked to the end of the tail which means when I then start working back up this side of the tail as I work this line to this point I will then add this pair back in and then I'll come back and then at this point I add that pair back in and then back and then at this point I add that final pair back in and that gives the three links across the across the tail so that you don't have that empty uh, hollow space like I had on the white one I hope that makes sense okay at this point here the rows back and forth from the body need to join on to the rows from the neck and then we've got where this pin was here is the point where it joins and to do that I'm using Lazy Susan and this has got like a very fine needle with the eye at this end and it's just got a thread through it to help and I've just tied a tied a bead on the end just so that it doesn't accidentally come unthreaded because the the eye of the needle is so tiny that it's a pain to thread so so I've just put the the bead on there to stop it accidentally coming unthreaded and each one of the swans has 13 joins like this but each one I'm still get really nervous because it's fiddly to do and I worry I'm going to break a thread so let's see how we get on so we put the pointy end through the loop and I'm doing this at a really awkward angle to be able to film it okay and then just pull back I'm just going to use another needle just to lift up that thread so I've got a, a loop of this thread on the needle and then I just take um, this end pair of bobbins which is my my worker pair I just put one of the bobbins through that loop and then when I pull the lazy Susan back it will pull that gold thread up through okay and then I can take out the lazy Susan so I've got this loop sorry my fingers and 
thumbs all in the way. Okay, hang on, let me let me just loosen off a bit of thread. I should have made the thread longer to start with. Okay, so now we've got a loop of the gold thread and we just take the other bobbin and put it through that loop and then pull it pull it tight so now the body is linked to the neck and then we just carry on working backwards and forwards until we get to the next one and then I just repeat each time they uh, they come to that same point so now that that join has been made, just to help hold it in place, we just want to put a pin back through the hole just to make sure that we we hold it in the right place. Okay, and then as well as being the first uh, join, this is also the point where we switch to doing the half stitch instead of the cloth stitch. Initially, because these rows are very narrow, you won't see the pattern developing because it's going to be too squashed. But as as the wing gets bigger, then you'll see more distinctly the, the more open pattern. But I'll just demonstrate the half stitch. Although um, what, I would, what I did on the other one was at each end of the row, I did a whole stitch. Um, which I've been informed by my my teacher that the whole stitch is actually four moves whereas in a previous video I'd said that the the cloth stitch and the whole stitch were the same thing um, but apparently according to my teacher the cloth stitch is three moves and the whole stitch is four moves which makes more sense because the half stitch is only two so it makes more sense that the half stitch would be two and the whole stitch would be four um, but I wasn't planning to get into too much detail on that on this video it's already going to be long enough as it is okay so the half stitch is literally just cross twist and then you see that that the pairs are separated cross twist 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 because I was doing the whole stitch at the end okay and then so we'll just put a pin up in that one this is where it's when it's tight it's tricky to see where the next pin needs to go okay and then um, I just carry on back and forth like that so I do a whole stitch at either end of the row and then the rest is just half stitch so the second swan is finished I did something a little bit weird here with these these loops are a bit baggy for some reason I don't know what I did wrong there but hopefully I'll be able to fix that when I stitch it down to the fabric. I didn't notice that there was an issue until I took out the pin and then it kind of went a bit loose. Um, and then at the end I just used two of the two of the threads to kind of wrap around and then just tied a knot just to finish off at the end. It's probably not the best way to do it but it's the only way I know how to do it um, and just cut off the the threads and um, most of the bobbins have still got quite a bit of thread left on but one of them look at this well that was making me so nervous as I was getting nearer and nearer the end and I was like please don't run out um if it was a normal thread I've kind of learnt from previous patterns how I can quite simply just add a new thread in and then as you're as you're working and weaving it in it becomes quite secure but as I mentioned before because this thread kind of frays and separates when it when it splits at the end I really didn't want to have to join an, a new thread in because I thought I'd end up with with messy bits anyway that I didn't need to worry because I got to the end without running out so the next step is to take the remaining pins out and um, see about getting some fabric to stitch it down to 
I realised I forgot to tell you how I did the little gaps to form the eye and having done three swans recently I can't face starting a fourth one just to show you on on video how I did that so basically once you, I got to this point and then over the space of five rows I put in extra twists so on the first first row I put in one extra twist and then two and then three and then back to two and then one so that the the extra twists is what causes the gap so so doing the one two three and then two one that's what kind of makes the gap bigger and then smaller again and um, hopefully that makes sense okay so now I'm ready to start sewing the swans onto this dark blue fabric and um, to get the the fabric tight while I'm sewing I just stretched it and stapled it onto an old picture frame um, I've got a an embroidery hoop which I was originally planning to use to get the fabric tight but it's it's only really big enough to do one and a half swans at a time and I didn't want to put the hoop over one of the swans and perhaps distort the the lace and stretch it out of shape so I'm hoping that this will work quite well I just need to now poke the threads through to the back and uh, start sewing them down so I finished sewing the swans onto their backing fabric and I've given it a press from behind so it's nice and flat and I'm really really happy with how it's looking of course as always there are little details which I know could have been done better for example I could have done a tidier job on the wingtips and the point of this beak is a little bit off but apart from that you know I'm I'm really happy with it the back is a mess but that doesn't really matter does it <laughs> nobody's going to see that once it's in a frame um, the the gold thread was I think I've already mentioned it was a little bit tricky to work with for the lace making but bearing in mind that the label said it was sewing thread it was a nightmare sewing with it because the the different filaments of the thread just unwound and then it was getting knotted up and then I was having to cut it short and then re-add re a new bit of thread it was it was a nightmare so just between you and me look at the state of the back <laughs> And this, this bit here is uh, the best I could manage to finish off all the threads that had been used for the lace um, that came through from the tail points, uh, not the tail points, the, the wing points um, from, the, from the actual lace process. But yeah, shockingly messy on the back, but who cares? That's going to be hidden and hopefully my mum and dad will never see that bit unless they watch this video. <laughs> So excited to be able to show you the final result. I got it back from the framers yesterday, just in time to give to my mum and dad tomorrow for their anniversary. So here it is. You're probably getting reflections all around my living room right now. <laughs> I closed the blinds just to try and minimise the, the glare, but even so, I expect you're getting all sorts of reflections off the glass. Um, so around the edge there's a there's a narrow mount with a gold colour but it's kind of a, a more subtle gold it's not like a bright brassy kind of yellow gold if you know what I mean um, and then the wide mount which is kind of a pale blue um, and then a dark dark wood frame which will kind of match really nicely with their furniture it's a nice chunky frame as well and on the back the framers put like little felt pads on the corners at the bottom so that it doesn't damage the wall when it's hanging um, and then you probably can't see it on on camera but at the bottom here there's some gold embossing on the blue mount and it just says 50 golden years 1973 to 2023 so all that's left now is to wrap it up and to give it to them I hope they like it, I'm sure they will, but if they don't like it, I'll have it back because I love it. <laughs> I'm so proud of it and although 
it was quite an investment getting it framed. I'm glad I did because it's such a special occasion and because they're, they're not having a, a party or anything I'm just taking them out for dinner so I wanted to do something a bit extra special with the gift. Um, yeah, so I'll let you know what they think.